to come before you. I praise God. My, I will be coming from Proverbs 22 and 16. It ring a bell. It should ring a bell. So therefore, my the theme, I know the Sunday school has done went out, but the Lord kind of kept this in my spirit to add it to my message on today. So our theme for the Sunday school was train up a child. Okay, so Proverbs 22 and 6, and 6 says, I'm sorry, 22 and 6, I said 16, but it's 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Yeah. So I'm not going to too much focus too much on the training up of a child. I'm going to focus more on the word train. Yeah. We see that train is to teach a person or animal a particular skill or type of behavior through practice and instruction over a period of time. Yeah. We see that train up is if someone trains you up, they teach you new skills or give you the necessary preparation so that you will reach the standard required for a particular job or activity. Yeah. So we're talking about training right at the moment. That's the thing. Not my topic, but the thing. So we see that training up a child is very important. Yeah. And may or may not be damaging to him yeah. or her in the future. 
future of her life. Yeah. We are taught by our parents, our grandparents, our uncles, our aunts, and even our friends, different ways of life based on how they were taught. Yeah. And then sometimes we are taught by mere experience. Amen. So okay, you may be wondering why the Lord had me start here at this, on this message of training. But he wanted me to do this because he wanted y'all to know that now he wants to train us in the way we supposed to live for him. Yeah. He wants full control over our willpower. Yeah. He wants to teach us the way of holiness. Yeah. Talking about training. He wants to teach us, one, there's a lot of things he wants to teach us, but I'm going to point out three. The skill of prayer, how to behave, and how to reach the holy standards he has required yeah. for our lives. Yeah. Talk about training. Next, once he has taught us these things, then he can train us. So see, you got to be taught. Yeah. And then once you're taught, then you can be trained. Okay, even though it kind of go together, because sometimes, you know, on the job, they teach you and train you at the same time. But right now, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking about being teach, taught rather, and then being trained. So he trains us to prepare others to meet him. Yeah. He trains us so that how to be successful in all we do for him. Yeah. And then he trains us to preach. Yeah. Talking about training. Now upon fulfilling this training period, now we're going into my text, which is countdown. Mm -hmm. Whose side are you on? Mm -hmm. So now we found out about training about teaching. So now we're living in a moment of a countdown. We're living in time. And time has no number. All right. Even though we may have it on our watch or clock in the wall. But in God's sight, there's no number. All right. So now all this training and teaching that he is doing for us, we're in the middle of a countdown. Amen. So now, what does countdown mean? Final moments before significant events and the procedures carried out during these times. Yeah. So he done trained us. Now we in a battle now. Yeah. We don't know when he's coming. So this countdown is going down. So we ain't got time to be playing. We ain't got time to be falling by the wayside. We ain't got time to be picking out teeth. Excuse me, don't pay me no mind. We ain't got time to be taken up with foolishness. Why? Because we are in the middle of a countdown. And God has trained us. He has prepared us. For this particular time. Amen. Amen. Now since we are. As children. Have been taught and trained by God. We know our destiny. Yeah. So just like I said. We ain't in no confused state of mind no more. Amen. We ain't got to be walking around. Wondering where we go. Right. We don't have to say. I heard of heaven. We can say. I'm on my way to heaven. Yeah. And I won't turn back. I know most messages uses we supposed to, we should have, and the most famous line when someone falls from grace, I thought he or she was saved. But I'm coming to tell you that I'm saved. We all are saved today by the grace of God. So we ain't got to be confused no more. Oh, thank God. We're in a countdown right now. Yeah. So we don't have to be wondering about nothing. Yeah. So you as individuals, as in control 
control of your life. In control of what you do. You're best to know where you're going. You best to know whose side you're leaning on. That song is very, very uplifting when you know whose side you want. Now, you can't sing it out of earnestly if you aren't sure. But once you know whose side you want, then you can say, I'm leaning on the Lord's side. Well, thank God. You'll know beyond a shadow of doubt. That you are on your way to heaven. Yeah. Ooh, once you get to that point, you ain't worried about nothing. Right. Things can roll off you like a duck's back. Because you know where you're going. Yeah. You know where he brought you from. Yeah. Mm. Oh, thank God. We're being trained. We done been trained by God. So now he put us in his countdown. Yeah. You know he put us so that we're able to get others. You, you, you must know who side you on. Yeah. It's a countdown, and Jesus is on his way back. Yes, Do not be like the foolish virgins. Right. What were they doing? Playing church? Oh, yes, they were. Read it. Yeah. Mm, it don't say they were playing church. They, they ain't had no oil. Yeah. So why they ain't had no oil? Because they were denying the power of their own. Yeah. So since they... they, they let, let, let's not let our oil run out. Right. Let's not play church. Let's be for real. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Because God is a real God. Yeah. And if he's living inside of us, we're real. Yeah. Oh yes we are. We ain't going to be playing all the time. We ain't going to be jesting and joking all the time. We ain't going to be talking no foolishness. We ain't going to be telling no lies. We ain't going to be spreading the rumors. Why? Because we're born again. We realize we're in a countdown. And time is winding. Oh, thank God. So let's not be like the, first, the, the foolish virgins playing church. It's a countdown. And you've been trained. So remember that. When the devil start working with you in your mind or in your heart or start telling you what to do against whomever. Remember, God has trained you. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Yes, he has. He's trained us. Yeah. When you take up that time and get on that altar and cry out and call his name, yeah. and he comes in and he changed the very inside of you. Yeah. That the outside began to look different. Yeah. Oh, yes, it does. Well, you begin to glow. Yeah. You begin to shine. You begin to see it happening. Yeah. Oh, yes, you do. I saw it many times. Oh, Being over people and, and just looking at them and watching how God has changed their countenance. Yeah. Oh, if you're dark and you get lighter. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, thank God for the power yeah. of knowing that we're trained. Remember, we're trained property. Okay, so you know what property is. You belong to somebody. Yeah. Our bodies are not our property anymore. Yeah. When we give it to God, it's God. Yeah. And our pastor was saying that um, she even prayed about her, her um, 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 what is it, parking lot. I mean, her parking space. Yeah. Yes, because God is in control of everything. He said, the reason why you ain't got because you ask the mess. Right. Then he also say the reason why you ain't got because you don't ask. Right. So don't ask the mess. Ask for what you need. Well, the song say what you need, God got. Right. He got everything you need. Right. Oh, we're trained on to take. Yeah. We're in a countdown. We're trained to do his bidding. You know what bidding is. Bid farewell. Bidding is to do. If you got parents, you're born into the world to listen to your parents. And to do what God said. Don't knock that out. Don't put your parents ahead of God too much. You're supposed to listen to them. 
supposed to do and obey those that have the rule over you. You're on a job. You listen to them. The jobs I had, they never had, they never had problems with me telling them how to run their job. And a lot of things I knew, knew everything about computers, know how to pick up a phone and answer it. But there was a way you had to do it. There was words you had to say. Hello, may I help you? Sometimes we have to say the company's name and Lord, don't let it be known. We have to say the whole, and they, and they sit there, no, 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 repeat all the words. Why? Because I was working for them. Got to be obedient to those who have the rule. Whoever's in charge of you at that particular time and moment, that's who you listen to. Oh, thank God. My only problem is late. They knew. I knew what my problem was. And they knew what I could do. So I kept the job. I ain't saying they approved the lateness. But I'm just speaking on the fact that I had the job and I had to obey. And I had to do what they wanted me to do. I had to say what they wanted me to say. Because when it was time, when I got the job at first, I was a front desk receptionist. So that means I was on in the front. When you walk into this company, you saw me. So you know I had to dress presentable. Yeah. I had to look like I belonged to a company. Right. So I had to come in there every day with a suit on. And it was no problem to me because I loved it to dress.